Good morning, brothers and sisters, and happy Sabbath. We're here today at Kyle's home here in uh, Clay Cross, and uh, I'm going to ask him if he can open up in prayer for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Happy Sabbath. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank thee for this morning again to be here to celebrate thy sacrament. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you will be with us all this day and continue to be in our hearts and our minds as we bless this most sacred sacrament. I say this in the name of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So thank you for that, Carl. So yes, we're going to do the sacrament on this uh, Sabbath morning, the Saturday, the real Sabbath. I was watching a, a thing on TV about Stone Away, okay? Yeah. They're opening a Tesco's on the Sabbath day. Yeah. But they said the Sabbath day was the Sunday, and they don't want Tesco's open on the Sunday. But the true Sabbath day is uh, Saturday. Saturday, yes. So I guess our... Our Tesco's is open all the time, so we just got used to it now. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, but, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Yeah, the vicar there in Stone Away in Scotland said, we don't want Tesco to open on the Sabbath day. God bless the vicar. So we celebrate the true Sabbath, Sabbath. day where we share the sacrament. And uh, we're going to say the prayers in a minute. And I think it's about time that Kyle said the bread instead of the water or the wine. So he can kick us off first with the bread. So I hope you've all got your emblems ready. I see Carl's prepared ours. Uh, and uh, he's done a good job of it as well. We've got nice round bits of bread and a nice little cup of uh, something. <laughs> At this time, we welcome our present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to His mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ as individuals and as a community, worshipping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. Yes, if you'd like to bow or kneel, Kyle is going to read the first sacrament prayer. Over to you, Kyle. Oh, God. The Eternal Father, we ask thee, in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread for the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he has given them, that they may always have a spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, I'm going to bless the wine, or it could be wine or water, whatever you have. And um, so the prayer that Kyle said for the bread, comes from Doctrine and Covenants 17 and 22. And the prayer for the wine or the water comes from Doctrine and Covenant 17, 23, where it does state here, though, wine. So we will say wine today. So if you'd like to bow or kneel or whatever you prefer. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, 
that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. Shalom, brothers and sisters, for this week's message, I want to share with you from the Book of Mormon, Messiah 1, 38 through 39 in the RAV, which would be the RLDS or Community of Christ edition of the Book of Mormon, and it would be 2, 9 in the OPV, which would be the Salt Lake City Church's version of the Book of Mormon. And in here, King Benjamin says, My brethren, all ye that have assembled yourselves together, you that can hear my words, which I shall speak unto you this day. For I have not commanded you to come up hither to trifle with the words which I shall speak, but that you should hearken unto me and open your ears that ye may hear, and your hearts that ye may understand, and your minds that the mysteries of God may be unfolded to your view. When we hear someone speaking, you're watching a video right now, if you're reading a book or an article, or you know, you're, you're at church and someone there is sharing a message, why are we there? Now, a common answer is we're there to worship. And that's correct. That's true. We are there. We sing praise to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. We may take communion. And these things are an act of worship. But I believe we're also there to teach one another and learn. I think that it's hard for us to learn in a vacuum. And when you only hear from one person or you're just studying by yourself, yeah, you have the Holy Spirit, which helps, but I have found in my experience, and one of the reasons why I really enjoy having the meetings that I do with my fellow saints from various different backgrounds throughout the week, as we talk to one another, the Holy Spirit moves us to teach one another and we learn a lot more. And so this week, what I want to talk to you about is King Benjamin's ideas here on how to better communicate. When... I'm in a meeting, if I'm asked to speak the opening prayer, to I'm sorry, to offer the opening prayer or the closing prayer, one of the things you might notice that I say a lot is, you know, I'll invite the Spirit and ask that the Spirit will open our mouths and our ears so that we can communicate Spirit to Spirit. And I believe that that's what King Benjamin is talking about here. I think that he's giving us the formula of how to speak Spirit to Spirit. Now, the first part isn't here. That's the part that, that I mentioned, that is we need to invite the Spirit. And in inviting the Spirit, we need to recognize we're not there to trifle with some words that someone's saying. I remember one time I was I was younger, but I was an adult. And I was at the Salt Lake City Church. And I don't remember if this young woman was bearing her testimony or if she was giving a talk. It was just too long ago. But I remember this young woman got up. And she bore testimony of a time when the Holy Spirit, she was reading a book and she wasn't feeling it. And when I say she wasn't feeling it, it wasn't just that like, you know, I'm not really into this book. It was like the Holy Spirit was telling her, you need to stop reading this. But she couldn't put the book down because she didn't want to not finish the book. And she said that she regretted not listening to the Spirit. And I remember when she said that, it really stuck with me for two reasons. One, because I also, if I start a book, I have a hard time not finishing it. I, I want to know what the conclusion that the author comes to, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. But also, I remember various times in my life when I did or did not listen to the Holy Spirit. And the times when I did not, well, in one case, I was in a car accident. And so when this young woman shared this testimony, shared this, this story, it really hit home. And so I, I was very moved by the Spirit. And I was like, yeah, I get it. But I was also a little torn because of the book side of it. I, the idea of putting a book down, I just don't know that I could do it. And a couple of years later, I was actually reading a book. And I was like, no, I want to finish this book. And, and it was saying some things that I just didn't feel comfortable with. I disagree with it. And it wasn't just a disagree with it. I was like, it was basically trying to say that, trying to prove that Jesus was not divine. That Jesus was a man who had a mystical experience and misunderstood the mystical experience and thought that he was divine. And 
that is an antichrist idea because Jesus isn't Jesus wasn't a man who thought he was a god he was a god who came here to live as a man he he is the god who came here to live as a man let me rephrase that and so even though the intellectual part of me wanted to know how this person was getting these conclusions and even though the spiritual side of me would never agree with those conclusions it was that young woman's testimony that really hit me and made me realize no there's nothing of value in this for me because it it doesn't matter to me how this person came to their conclusions it, it really doesn't because Regardless of what their conclusions were, I wasn't going to agree with them because I, I already know God and I know that Jesus is God and it's a solid knowledge. And so therefore, I don't really need to argue. I don't need to get contentious with anyone that believes these things. They're welcome to believe whatever they want and they're not going to affect my beliefs. They're not going to help me in my spiritual journey or my growth. And so therefore, they were not relevant to me. And on the flip side, because of the fact that it was teaching an antichrist message as a you know, a disciple and a minister of Jesus Christ. It really didn't have any place. There were there were more spiritual edifying things that I could read and study. And so I was very, very grateful to this young woman. I, I took the book, I put it down, I actually threw it away. It's one of the very few books I've ever thrown away. And I remember an, another friend of mine, she saw that book in the trash can. She's like, I can't believe you threw a book away. And I, I told her the story. And she's like, I still can't believe you threw a book away. And that stuck with me. And I just thought about it, you know. And, and the one thing that kept coming back to me over and over again was that I knew that I did the right thing because this young girl had testified truth. And I recognized that truth when she shared her testimony. When she shared her message because i was listening she was speaking through the holy spirit and i was listening to the holy spirit and so because of that later on when i needed that guidance and that counsel the holy spirit was there to remind me of what i had heard in the spirit and i'm very grateful that not long after that maybe a couple years after that i i was able to run into this young woman again now as an adult and i had the opportunity to thank her and share this with her that she had helped me through something that for a lot of people probably wouldn't be a big deal but for me it was a very difficult thing to be able to stop reading something because i want to know things i love to read i love to learn i love to study and having that support, that backup, it's something that we all need. And so now you're probably wondering, well, okay, thank you. What does this have to do with that scripture? Well, King Benjamin tells us that we need to come in. So I mentioned earlier, we need to invite the spirit. It also says that we need to open our ears so that we can hear what's being said. Now, there's a big difference between hearing and listening. And you can use whichever word for whichever. It really doesn't matter. But, you know, I can hear the birds chirping outside. But are we really listening to the song of the birds? That's what they're really saying. It's the same thing with people. They can talk at us or to us. And we can acknowledge that we that they spoke and wait for our turn to talk or we can truly listen to what they're saying and so therefore once we've invited the spirit we have to open our ears so that we truly hear what they're really trying to say which means thinking about what they're saying and not merely waiting for our turn to talk the second thing is we have to have open hearts we have to be willing we can't just be like you know, when we harden our hearts and we're waiting for our turn to fight. No, let me see what's wrong with this. You tell me your thoughts so I can pick it apart and destroy it. 
And we have to open our hearts to try to find the good in what is being said. I want to go back to that book for a second. If it would have been a book that had anything good in it at all, I could have walked around the parts that are not relevant to me and, and envelop the good things of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But because this book was trying to take people away from Jesus Christ, there's no point in the spirit of contention and fighting. Let them believe what they believe. But rather, I was able to set it down because the Holy Spirit, my heart was open to listen, but there was nothing to hear. And so, brothers and sisters, there's going to be times when someone's talking to you and don't just let them talk at you. Listen to what they're saying. Take it into your heart. Try to find the good. And if it's like that book where it's just a satanic message of the Antichrist, then say thank you. I appreciate you sharing your opinion with me. That means a lot. And let it go. You don't have to agree to disagree. You don't have to fight. You don't have to say your piece. It doesn't matter. Let them believe what they believe. And the third one is to open our minds. Think about what's being said so that the mysteries of God may be unfolded to your view. Now, in order for the mysteries of God to be unfolded into our view, we have to be filled with the Holy Spirit because without the Holy Spirit, we can have no visions, we can have no revelations, we can't know the mysteries of God. So this goes back to that initial comment that I made about inviting the Spirit so we can speak spirit to spirit and listen spirit to spirit. This is what we have to do in order for this to connect to our spiritual memory, not our rational, not our intellectual memory, but our spiritual memory. What's the difference? Well, I know that two plus two equals four. And if I take a test and someone says two plus X equals four, I know that two equals X or X equals two, however you want to say that. And, and, and I have these rational thoughts on that. The same thing, I can study philosophy or even theology, and I can say, this person believed this thing, and this is why, and I understand it on a rational level. But how does it affect me personally? How does it help me become a better disciple of Christ or a better minister? So that I can, in turn, let that light of Christ shine forth to help heal the creation, to help others. Because that's what being a disciple is about. It's not just about helping me, it's about helping others. Well, we have to be bridge builders and not wall builders. And in order to do that, we have to do everything by the Holy Spirit. And that, of course, means avoiding the spirit of contention. So with that in mind, I want to share one last scripture with you. And I've talked about this scripture before, but I want to share it with you because it's one that means a lot to me. And it's one I use a lot on social media. This is 3 Nephi. I'm going to start in verse 30 of the RAV which is the RLDS or Community of Christ edition, and 1129 in the OPV, which is the Salt Lake City Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints. It's their edition of the Book of Mormon. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hath the spirit of contention is not of me, but is of the devil, who is the father of contention. And he stirreth up the hearts of men to contend with anger one with another. Behold, this is not my doctrine to stir up the hearts of men with anger one against another. But this is my doctrine, that such things should be done away. In order to avoid the spirit of contention, we have to speak spirit to spirit. The spirit of contention builds a wall over our hearts and nothing gets out and nothing gets in. We can't teach each other with a wall. But if we eliminate that wall, it becomes a bridge. And the Holy Spirit creates this bridge that allows us to speak spirit to spirit, heart to heart, and then we can truly communicate with one another the way that ben King Benjamin is teaching us to do. And if we can do this, I believe that our religion, and by our religion, I mean Mormonism, the Latter-day Saint movement. I mean Christianity. I mean the Abrahamic faiths. We can find common ground and we can work together to do the work of the Lord. There's already enough war in this world. Let's follow the Holy Spirit. Let's follow the teachings of the Book of Mormon. 
And let's learn to be one in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. That's my message for you this week. And I share it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, that ends the sacrament for this week. And uh, just got a few people to pray for, uh, especially Carl and his home here. He's having trouble with, like, water leakage and it's messing the ceilings up. And the council have sent people out and done pipes, but I don't think they're addressing the main thing where there's there must be a rodent or something up there that's, so the chew, that's chewing something. So they need to get someone out to to evict that. And so we got Kyle to pray for. We got Mark to pray for as well. Uh, and his family and David and, and Brant and everybody. Uh, we got Anne Worth to pray for somebody, I know, a lovely lady I know. Uh, well, she goes to Community of Christ and her daughter Claire. Her husband died the other day, David Worth, and uh, we just pray for them as well. But we we can do all this praying. We We're praying to them now, so Lord, I bring all these people to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So don't forget, we've got prayer night on Thursday night. I wasn't there the other night because I went to a meeting at Community of Christ. And yes, all the same people have got in. <laughs> that beggars. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and uh, we're now going to have solar panels on Community of Christ Church in clay cross so that we can save energy and probably sell it back to the uh to the national grid or or to energy suppliers and it helped bring the bills down but we we were hoping to get funding to have the heating done as well but that didn't happen but may happen in time because it really needs it the the heating's really old there so Yep, uh, David's going to leave a link on the top and my email address on the bottom and it leaves us only to say happy Sabbath, have a good day and it's by from Mission Centre, Clay Cross, Kyle's home <laughs> and we say shalom. Shabbat shalom, brothers and sisters. Shabbat, God bless. Yeah, you bet, shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, yeah. Shabbat shalom. I said you bet. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> See you later. See you later, folks. Have a good day. Oh, by the way, we're on Blue Sky now, so look out for us. The Fellowship of Christ United Kingdom. Look out for us on Blue Sky.